In this video, I want to continue our discussion of the model implied variance and covariance of indicator variables when we're talking about our model as being written down in this matrix form. And at the end of the last video, we got an expression which started to look something like the one we have here, which on first glances appears quite unwieldy. So how do we proceed? Well, first of all, what we do is we notice that this second expression here actually contains this F transpose times U which if we rewrite it is the same thing as f transposed with dimensions f by n times u n v. And what we do now is we realize that the unique factor scores, which is that which is contained within u, are defined to be completely independent of the factor scores. That's actually the definition of the unique factor scores. It represents the variance of variables which is not due to the common shared factors. So because of that, we know that this correlation between the two has to be equal to zero. Furthermore, we notice that we have a very similar expression in the third actual component of our variance covariance matrix, which is similarly going to be equal to zero because it's just the transpose of this original expression. So instantly, we can just remove this second and third expression from our variance covariance expression. Then what we do is we look at each of these expressions in turn. So this first one, what we've got here is we've got an f primed with dimensions f by n times f n f. And what we can actually do is we can take inside of this the 1 over n because since n is a scalar, it doesn't matter whether I multiply p by it or whether I multiply this sort of inner expression. And what we do is we then re realize that essentially what this represents is it represents the correlation between the factor scores because I've just taken the original matrix of the factor scores and multiplied it by its transpose, which as we've shown in previous videos actually represents the variance covariance matrix for a given variable. So here I'm just going to write this as RFF to indicate it is the variance covariance matrix for the factor scores. Okay, so what about this term here, which is the fourth expression? We've got U primed VN times u n v and again I'm just going to write the 1 over n here as well such that we actually do get out something which is useful. And again we realize that this is some sort of variance covariance matrix but now this represents the variance covariance matrix for our unique factor scores. So I'm actually going to write that as r u u to differentiate it from RVV, but implicitly here I'm saying that RUU actually has dimensions V by V. So what we can do now is we can rewrite our expression for the variance covariance matrix of our indicator variables as being equal to PVF times RFF times P primed FV plus finally we're going to have an expression which has DVV times RUU times d v v primed and immediately we see that this has a common form to that which we derived in the case when we were representing our model by stacked equations so we had our, our equations in vector form this first component here is just the component of the variance which is due to the common factors whereas this second expression here which is all about the unique variances is that variance which is due to the unique factors. So this really is exactly the same thing as our expression we derived before, which is lambda, where lambda represented our weighting matrix. Here we've represented it by P, times phi, where phi is our variance covariance matrix for our factors, times lambda primed, plus finally theta, where theta is our variance covariance matrix for our errors. And in the circumstance where the unique factors are uncorrelated with each other, we then have a statement that essentially RUU is equal to the identity matrix. So it's just a matrix which has just got ones down its diagonal. In that circumstance, we then find that RVV collapses to being equal to PVF times RFF times P primed FV plus finally DVV times DVV primed. 